Hello and welcome to the MEN's Weekly Football Podcast. I'm Mike Keegan and I'm here with our Manchester United reporter, Stuart Matheson, fresh from uh, a nice little win at Anfield. Stuart? Yeah, well, well not fresh, but I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> and Rob Dawson, who is um, covering Manchester City in Stuart Brennan's absence this week. Uh, Stuart's not so good. Other Stuart, we'll start with you. Um, not a fantastic performance from United, but... You can never complain with a win at Anfield, can you? No, and they didn't, and they, uh, you know, they're very honest about it. They realised they'd escaped there by the skin of the teeth. Didn't really deserve the win, but you know, hey, you take some you know, like that through the course of a season, and I'm sure it'll happen the other way around. Um, but I think what United fans are wanting to see now from, from, from Reds is a bit of a performance. Uh, I think the recovery since losing the first game against Everton have been fantastic. Uh, five wins on the trot, uh, but there hasn't been a, I suppose Wigan maybe, but there's not really been a standout display in that time. I think United fans are now wanting to see, you know, the feedback you get from them, they want to see some sort of something decent. Uh, they're, they're getting through, the scoring goals, but they're getting through a little bit by the skin of the teeth. And I, I think it's time they started uh, putting a performance, really. It's a lot like last season, isn't it? Well, so it's, it's, it's a lot like. The last two or three seasons, to be honest. I mean, they won, you know, the the 2011 title, they ended the record 19th. And uh, you know, in fairness, a lot of people said, "How how how did United do it?" Um, because they didn't look convincing all that season, uh, and they kept in there against City last year to the very last kick, as we know. Yeah, admittedly, they had an awful lot of injuries to, to put up with last season, uh, which they have again this season. So. In fairness to them, I think that they've done fantastic to stick around. I think, I think only Manchester United could have done what they've done the last two seasons. Uh, not perform greatly, but just do the business. But like I say, I do think there's a, an element now is that the fans say, "Yeah, okay, we've done that. Let's let's see some step up so again. Yeah, let's just have a bit of uh, value for money, shall we say? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, going back to the Liverpool game, one thing that strikes you when you go is, you know how good the relations between the two clubs off the pitch are mm. um, and I think that stretched into the stands a little bit on Sunday it was uh, nice to see the United fans respecting the tributes for Hillsborough yeah it was great um, in the main part there was a, a couple of little pockets of uh, things that we didn't want to see um, but you know there's a lot of work done in the lead up to to try and get this message through to people that are, you know I think they were probably talking. Uh, some people were going to behave anyway, as they were the majority yeah. of them anyway. But I think they got through to some of the minority as well, um, because they are two great clubs with, with fantastic tradition, and both had the tragedies. And you know, that was respected on Saturday. I thought, I thought Liverpool were brilliant the way they handled it all, as, as I would expect them to be. And United. Two, they always do these kind of occasions very, very well. Um, I thought United's the way they, what they did with the '96 on the back yes. and the shirts, the Sir Bobby uh, bouquet of flowers too. Well, way to the cup as well from Sir Bobby. That went yeah, quite yeah. well. Yeah, well, you know, he's from an era when the, there wasn't that kind of bitterness. Uh, it was a better era that he was in, really. But I thought United, what United did was was simple, really, but respectful. They knew it was Liverpool's day. And they did what they had to do, and they did it very, very well. And um, like I said, there's only just one little bit during the game. And then the little flashback at the end wasn't there. But yeah, a lot uh, of people yeah. say that's because of the Liverpool fans, just a couple of idiots, really. Well, exactly. Yeah. And, and sadly, you, you, you're always going to get that. And, uh, and I'm glad a that the Liverpool fans weren't going during the match uh, when the United said, "Where you, where's your famous music song?" I'm glad they didn't rise to that. Yeah. And. Uh, so at the end of the day, I, I think you could say the whole thing went off as, as well as can be expected, and very, very well anyway. Yeah, someone who's been to dozens, you must have been to dozens of these games. Certainly could have been a lot worse. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you, you just never know what's going to happen. Basically, um, you're right. It could have been a lot worse. You, you, you do all the the right things beforehand. You hope you're getting the message through, but there are some people who just don't want to listen. Yeah. Uh, thankfully, that the minority was probably even less than the minority, the usual minority. Yeah. So, 
you know, um, they were never going to triumph on, on, on Sunday. And uh, I think uh, we should thank our lucky stars for that. Um, I think, as everybody said, I don't think it's going to change the mindset <laughs> next no, time. There was still quite, there's still there's quite a decent rivalry there. Yeah, of course it is. It, you know, it's, it's always going to happen. Yeah. Um, but I'm just glad that Sunday went off without any. For both clubs, you know, I'd, I'd hate to have seen United if it's tarnished, tarnished, it sort of, um, you know, uh, done the wrong thing. So I, th- I thought it was just great, really. Yeah. Rob, um, wasn't the best of performances from City, but it looked for a long time as though they were going to snatch you in. Yeah, um, like you say, it wasn't the best performance. Um, they were probably expected to play better than that. But then, I think for, the, for a lot of City fans, it's probably the first time they've got to see Arsenal for an extended length of time. Um, and they were very impressive because um, all in, in the midfield ran the game really um, in the first half especially and um, it was probably a, maybe a, against run of play a little bit that City took the lead but um, getting 10 minutes from the end still with a, a 1-0 advantage you'd, you'd probably expect them then to close it out um, in the end it was disappointing that, that Arsenal scored right to death but like so many people say all the time it's a mark of a good team that you can get close or win games when you're not playing particularly well and I think that like United well exactly I mean like Stuart just said you know, United weren't great at, at Anfield on Sunday and won the game um, City were close on, on Sunday as well um, I think at the end of the season people will probably look at that point and think that's quite a good point um, if last season sort of anything it's that every goal and every point matters um, the players have said the same thing when we spoke to them they, they said the same thing after they drew at Anfield that the point they got there last season in the end might have won the title last year so um, I think in the end they'll probably be quite happy with the, with the points at home to Arsenal I think Arsenal are going to be there or thereabouts towards the end of the season so I don't think it's a huge disaster We spoke last week about Arsene Wenger and the fantastic job that he's doing at Arsenal um, do you think that they will not be far off at the end of the season do you think he's finally got that team um, I suppose we're only going to find out at the end of the season. I mean, I think that obviously there's been a lot said about the impact that Steve Bowles had with the, the defence, um, taking the groupers uh, on their own and, and going through things, like set pieces with them. Um, I'd expect, I mean, they've got the, the players there, the players are good enough to be there challenging for the title at the end of the year. It's, it's whether they've got that the ability to stick with the, the front runners all the way to the end. I mean, we've seen it in the past couple of years where they've done well till, till Christmas and then hit a, a tough run of games and, and maybe struggle a little bit and fallen off the pace. So it'll, it'll be a, a test for them come sort of February, March when, when the, the games get, uh, come thick and fast, whether they can stick with those the teams that are leading the, the title race. But like I said, I mean, they've got a fantastic group of players. I mean, it seems like he's bought particularly well this summer, uh, Wenger, especially with the likes of Cazola who's come in. Um, so um, I would expect them to be there or thereabouts. Uh, I think most people would, would agree after seeing the, the performances in the first couple of weeks of the season. Yeah. Well, my, my put paid to all these Arsenal fans uh, calling for his head. That's absolute nonsense. Well, yeah, I mean, but I suppose it is because he's done a fantastic job when he came in. He was a, a relative unknown, really, when he came in from, from Japan and he sort of turned that, that team around and, and started winning titles and FA Cups and started challenging in the Champions League. Um, you've got to admire the way he stuck to his philosophy because I think, I don't think there's any doubt there that there's money there for him to spend if he wants it. Um, Arsenal is a very attractive club for players who want to sign I mean, right in the heart of London it's a huge club and a huge stadium I don't, I don't think that many foreign players would, would turn them down if they got the chance I think it really is Wenger just sticking to his philosophy of, of trying to buy young um, trying to bloody his, his young players that want to come through the academy when he has a chance um, and you've got to admire that I mean it's, it's obviously not worked out the last couple of years because they've not won a trophy and there's a lot said about how many years they've gone without winning a trophy um, and you can understand the fans' frustration when you were sort of board members coming out and saying, oh, he's, he's got 50 million, he's got 100 million to spend. Uh, and then just sat there not spending it. And you can understand some fans thinking, well, we'd rather he spend 50 million and win, win a trophy. Um, but I think Wenger is going to prove this year again that he's probably the right man, probably the only man to, to lead Arsenal. Um, and I expect you won't hear many, many complaints from fans if, uh, if they do win something this year. Another London opponent for City this weekend. Uh, trip down to Fulham and not very many happy memories of uh, what happened last year. No, I mean, that was a bit of a kick in the teeth really last year, going 2-0 up and then drawing two each, especially with the start they had. And obviously it was a 
the only time they dropped points for a long time in that season until they went to Chelsea, I think, um, when they were beaten. Um, I don't think that's going to play a massive part um, at the weekend. I think everyone would still expect City to go down there and win. I think if you were doing a, an accumulator, I think you'd have a, an away win on, on the, the weekend. Um, but it's the same. We, we're going to talk a, a lot this season about City going to, to different places, and there aren't many places where you would say, oh, yeah, I think... Yeah. I think City were probably happy with the draw and Mancini actually has said lots of times that he's never set out teams to, to do that when we asked him after Anfield he set up obviously with a three at the back um, we asked him if that was a de- uh, defensive formation and he sort of laughed at us and said no it's exactly the opposite it's an offensive formation we we're trying to win games we don't go to places like Anfield and Old Trafford and Stamford Bridge anymore looking to draw or, or limit the damage as it were um, to go to these places to win um, I'm fully expecting to go to, to Craven Cottage and do that. Good stuff. Stuart, London opponents for United and Spurs have recovered after a bit of a dodgy start. Do you think um, VS Boris is the man to uh, put him back on track? Well, I have to say, I was very surprised he got the job. Um, I thought he was I thought he was unlucky last season to, to get the bullet from Chelsea, to be honest, because when you're given the remit to change to change the side around, get rid of the old old guard, and then he does that, yeah. and then gets the bully for doing that. It, it, it just didn't seem to add up to me. And uh, I'm actually actually a bit disappointed with Chelsea players as professionals last season because they seemed to stop playing for him. And then and then when he went, they started playing and and see they won the FA Cup in the Champions League. Yeah, I thought it was a bit naughty personally. I think they should be playing for him then, and they might have had a chance. Um, because as I say that was the uh, that was the remit he was given similarly now is it, is it Tottenham I mean you know everyone loved Harry Redknapp they loved his style everyone at White Hart Lane the fans thought it was great the best years they've had for a long long time uh, getting in the Champions League and the, the quality of play they were seeing there and the quality of play they were seeing out of real Tottenham um, and yet the board seem to or, or the owners want to, want to change it round and, they, and they're bringing a guy that they know He's probably a lot more offensive than uh, defensive, I should say, than Red Knapp. And um, so he's, again, he's been asked to do a job that really the, the fans probably don't want to see him do. So he's, he's on a tricky wicket again. Uh, yeah. I think there. Uh, I think he. I think he. You know, he, the, from what I've seen so far this season, there's a little bit more steel about them, um, but they've still got that sort of flair. So maybe he's he's managing to marry it up yeah, yeah. yeah, which you know, from United's point of view, on, on Saturday is, is going to be a tough one because, as I said to you before, you know, United are flying by the seat of the pants at the moment a little bit, and um, and and the defence as well. And you know, Jermaine Defoe to me, great, always great, a great striker. Yeah. You know. Um, some of his goals are absolutely fantastic and he, he sees that goal and he'll just go for it and he's, he's got some unbelievable goals and he'll get under your feet if you're a big guy at the back so Rio, Ferdinand and Manu Vidic you can have their, their work cut out to, to, to stop him um, but I think they're both two sides very similar uh, still finding their feet this season Yeah, you think we keep saying this every week now with United that we can't expect them to take teams to the cleaners anymore like we used to we haven't been able to do that for the last couple of seasons I spoke to someone at Anfield on Sunday and it, he was under the impression well it's a bit more exciting now do you think United you know, fans surely don't prefer grinding out wins as opposed to smashing everybody off the park well it's a difficult one I mean yeah I think if you took a straw ball it, it would probably be pretty even that I think some people want to still see the uh, the ones you see at the 7 nils against West Ham and the yeah. 7 nils against Bradford and all those kind of things uh, wonderful days in many respects but after a while it kind of got a little bit <laughs> it sounds awful but it got a little bit tedious yeah. because you just knew that there was going to be no resistance and United were walking I can only imagine <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and I know it sounds like you're, you're being uh, disrespectful and ungrateful but I think there is an element of some, some, some fans thinking well at least we're going now and when we do win it, there's a bit we're a bit more happy about it yeah. because we didn't expect to win that or this, that, and the other. So there is a bit more an element of um, surprise about what's what's happening in the United matches. Um, but I still I still think they're, they're capable of wiping the floor with people, and I think that's the frustrating part for a lot of United fans that there's not enough of that kind of a, a performance going in at the moment. 
a lot of people throw a lot of flack at Michael Carrick um, but I thought he's, he's been very good this season I thought again at Anfield when a lot of players didn't perform at Anfield mm. but he was in the middle of the park and he, he was doing his best to dictate things yeah I think Michael Carrick is one of those people one of those players rather that you notice him more when he's not there you notice what he gives to the side when he's not there I mean he, a couple of times I can't remember whether this season or last season when he wasn't playing and suddenly everyone was saying oh we've had Michael Carrick playing and yet these are the same people that were sort of saying yeah. well Michael Carrick let's get rid of him sort of thing and I must admit when Michael Carrick arrived at United, I mean, I think the guy's great. I think he's a smashing lad and a, and a great footballer. But a lot of the things that he did on the part to me went over my head. You know, he, he did something so simple and you kind of didn't notice it. And uh, I'm doing the reform ratings and then again thinking, actually, what did Michael Carrick do yeah, today? Yeah. You know, so he's like, all right, oh, six out of ten. And then some other people say, I thought he was brilliant today. He kind of split, for me, went over my head a lot. Uh, but for other people, you, you know, just, they thought it was fantastic. Um, I think the, the people who are kind of having a go at, has grown. I think for some reason they, they become a little bit of a target. Yeah, escape always object for escape goal. Uh, absolutely, in the United midfield is one big question mark at the moment, and um, they haven't got someone who will dig in there and put the foot on the ball and do a, a you know a Roy Keane type thing type job. And that's not Michael Carrick's game anyway. So he, he is fighting a bit of a battle now, but I think he's coming through it. I think people are starting to recognise, you know, you know this, we shouldn't have a go at Michael Carrick because, you know, you need a bit of his calm and his creation. That, you know, the creativity is something you have to particularly need in their game. Yeah. So, um, you know, he's, got, he's, he's, he's fighting back. You know, and his old club, Saturday, it'd be nice to see him there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, there was talk, actually, there was talk in the summer he might go back to Tottenham. Really? Tottenham. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if there was anything really in it, but I think it was a speculation, you know. Um, but uh, they still quite like him there. Um, but yeah, he's, he's, I say, he's, uh, he's, he's starting to look the part again. So Rob thinks he's going to go down to Fulham and turn those over. Are United going to make it Manchester 2, London 0? Yeah, I think they will. I think it, it, won't, be a, it won't be a cakewalk, as we <laughs> as we've keep moaning about. Uh, I think they'll probably scrape it. I think they'll probably can lose a goal. It could be one of those three two or four to us, um, but I think United will win. Good stuff. Well, thanks, gents. Thanks for your time. As always, we'll have our match centres up and running on Saturday. It's um, three o'clock, isn't it, at uh, City? Uh, Quarter no. past five at United. Half five United. Half five United. Yeah. Feel free to join in online um, with each gents, and you can rate the players as well, all on our website. <laughs>